Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Pikmin 4. Last time we dropped off here in the Sun Speckled Terrace, killed some bull borbs, collected some gem things, and now we're gonna explore our first cave. Second cave. And if you like that, if you could like the video, comment and subscribe. Very good. Here is the last frost cavern. Note from Olimar, I entered a cave to look for the SS Dolphin, parts, and found a creature that defies the logic of space. It further surprised me by expelling frigid cold air. Imagine if there were Pikmin that had been acclimated to that cold air. This planet's ecosystem is full of mysteries. History is a mystery. The presence of... Okay. Take a look at this, Copton... Copton? Copton Olimar. That's not where I'm from. Okay. So this is, of course, just world building. Um, very, very intuitive and user-friendly cave system. This is basically everything that Pikmin 2 tried to do and did it better. Very, very helpful. We have 48 Pikmin, of course, but because we are capped at 20, that's the only amount that you'll be able to bring in. That number will, of course, expand once we experience that gimmick. But the game will tell you how much progress you've made per floor. And temporarily now, you won't be able to be given a heads up on how much success you've made. But that is something you can unlock later. In case you're anxious like me. Alright. So here we are. Hoochie is ready. He's like, let me murder stuff, please. And most every cave that you go in is going to have some variety of... A rescue officer that needs help. So we have some cheer grubs here. We have an item that I think might need Ochi to knock off the ledge. Okay, interrupting cutscenes. Maybe a speedrunning tactic. Uh, no, it's not. But yeah, you can collect dead creatures in the same way that it didn't give you Pocos in Pikmin 2. But why not, I guess? And of course, we have Ochi here. Our boy loves pot. Why not? It's very cathartic for some Oops. Very cathartic for some reason to just destroy this. I'm also one of those people that when I play games and there's destructible anything in the overworld, I will be destroying it. If I can roll through boxes or destroy pots, yeah, you know it. Okay, looks like we have some new friends here that are in a bit of a tussle. They look like Pikmin, but they're blue? They're not water Pikmin. What are these? Huh. Well, I don't want to... Cause our Pikmin to get into a mess. Oops. Let's see if we can send Ochi to help out. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Go, Ochi, go! Slowly bite it. So, as you can tell, um, this enemy, if it's not abundantly clear as it's being attacked by this variety of Pikmin, um, is in the similar fauna of the fire blowhug. And this is a frosty blowhug. So, surprise, but here is the first of the new Pikmin in this game. Ice Pikmin. Which are a little broken, a lot broken, and as you'll soon see, they kind of ascend the ranks to being some of the best along with the purple Pikmin and rock Pikmin. Here we go, Ice Pikmin. I always thought of Pikmin as plant-like creatures, so I never dreamed we'd come across an ice variant. They can use their icy bodies to freeze water, but they also float like ice in the water. Don't spray them with water, though. They don't like it. Yeah, Ice Pikmin rule. Very good early edition. It almost feels a little bit too cheap. But as you can see, when you go into caves like this and you do get given Pikmin, it does add it to your roster, which is really nice. 
So at least while you're in the cave, you do have the luxury of being able to use those types of Pikmin. And in certain cases, like we've seen in previous Pikmins, you'll be able to exchange the ones you have for the ones that you don't. So, Candy Pop Buds, for instance, that's probably the cleanest example. And, of course, oop, excuse me. That's usually, for the most part, the best way that you're going to be able to exchange your Pikmin. Oop, here we go. Here are the female shear grubs, which I hate with all my heart. Boop. They're so annoying that Ochi can't even kill them in one hit. But they're the ones that, if we remember, very obnoxious, very dangerous. They will eat your Pikmin. They are certainly very aggressive. And as much as I want you to be eat aggressive, not with my Pikmin. All right, that should be enough. And here is a new gimmick that we'll be tackling in just a moment, but first... Oh, I need one more Pikmin. I just need the one more Pikmin. There's so many gimmicks that are going to be happening just in this specific cable. There's more Ice Pikmin tucked away in here. Very cool. I'm getting so distracted. Here we go. This is something that I appreciate getting in this cave, but not overall. This is kind of an annoying gimmick. I'm not entirely sure why they did it like this, but maybe this is just to slowly on-ramp you into the game. So this is not an onion. This is onion adjacent. You'll see in just a little bit what that does and why it does. Why are you the way that you are? I'm gonna go ahead and flower up our ice pikmin. They have nice little yellow flowers, which I think is cool. You should have enough nectar at this point to gather all your Pikmin together and flower them. The overworld had plenty as well for all, all 20 of the reds present. So there's no excuses, viewers, okay? Flower your Pikmin or get out of here. Let's get this going. Yeah, Ice Pikmin rule. They are probably the most chill of all the Pikmin. I don't know if I'd say they're my favorite. It's a close... I mean, purples are probably hard to beat just because I'm the kind of person that just likes to rampage through games. But, you know. All right, so we have one unflowered Pikmin. And we also gathered a treasure. Now we have this new gimmick here. That is a jelly blob which is something that can only be handled by our new pals, the Ice Pikmin. So we have a full 30. Throw your Ice Pikmin here, and they'll fill up a little blue ice gauge. In doing so, that freezes something, obviously. Ooh. So now that it's done being frozen, you can send Ochi, and it still has to be destroyed in terms of damage like you would expect but overall once it's frozen anybody else can join the party and help out and you don't really need to do all of this if you just want to clear the way you can but you might be missing out on valuable assets so yeah once once that that blue ice meter has been filled up then you're good to go anybody can help here we go, another rescue member. Not dead, unfortunately. Err. I guess. It appears a castaway is also the same size as a bulbor. And we might as well clean up the mess here. Leave no trace, viewers. Once I get further into doing these caves, you don't really need to do this. The game, similarly to Pikmin 2, is very intuitive that once you start to clear out levels of caves and move through floors, you can just go to the exit, and then it will, of course, let you ascend with all of your other Pikmin. Oh! Who is it? It's Russ! Russ is awesome. Russ is one of the best characters in the game. Oh, 
because he makes his stuff. All the upgrades and little doodads that you'll be collecting throughout the game are not overworld based anymore. They are rust based. So there you go. In terms of usefulness, Russ is probably the number one, at least in my heart. Also, this bag says puppies. Show me your puppy. Okay, so very tough, one floor cavern. We're getting the heck out of here. Return to the surface, there's nothing else for you to do here. But now that we have our 10 Ice Pikmin, maybe something crazy. Now, I recorded the first half of this day in the last episode, and then I obviously haven't recorded in eons. So my Switch died, and then I had to reset it, and then I lost the first half of the, of the day and didn't save it as an autosave midday. Refreshing goo, there's so much goo in this game. The director of Destiny, it's a compass that looks like paint and creatures, of course. And the game will give you a heads up on the HUD of how much progress you've made. It'll tell you what sort of new Pikmin you have. It'll display all of them and you can break it down based on sub level. So we got a little bit of sparklium from the items and from the critters that we took. So. Yeah, I lost the first part of the recording, and I when I say lost, I mean like the progress that I made, I had to redo it. So it's not a huge deal. Probably going to try to record. Each episode should take the better part of a day. In-game day. Good job, Bingus. The Bingus flag. Flying high. As you can see, we still have a little bit of the day left. When you are in caves, though, you do lose a little bit of time above ground. It's slower, but... It, Colin denotes here that it's one-sixth of the time, so it's not infinite time. It's not the same as when you are underground like a Pikmin 2, but the onion adjacent thing that we collected, hmm, looks like the onion got a little bigger. Just a little, it says that the white bulb is called Flarlek. Great. So, that's the gimmick of this game! As you go into caves and explore, you will see that you get... 10 more Pikmin per, so that's very nice. Unfortunately though, the only way to get Ice Pikmin at this juncture is in caves. You are not able to do that... until. Now, we did hear that... oops! That was a red Pikmin that I... S <laughs> I was not paying attention to what I threw. Thank you, game, I know. Hurry! Now, uh, I don't think Ice Pikmin in the same way that Blue Pikmin could save them would work. So that's not great. Also, there's no real way to do ice freezing mechanics until you have the requisite amount, which in this case, as you saw, was 30. So you need quite a few Ice Pikmin. You can go into this cave... And I believe they'll, I don't know if they'll infinitely respawn, if they'll just respawn up to a certain amount. But you can do that. Also, I don't think I went and explored this. Similar to the, I guess, termite mounds of Pikmin 3. You will find more resources, which is great. You'll need a lot of those. They are important for overworld exploration, building bridges. But then also another component of that is the things that Russ makes require those. So, oops, sorry, Ochi just gave you an absolutely massive concussion. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you'll need plenty of those. Ooh, an item, very cool. And unfortunately we don't have, we don't really have a way to properly get our Pikmin to do what I need them to do. It's a bit frustrating, but it's okay. So now, there's a little bit of a way that we can... Is this not going to let me do it yet? No, it's because I had OG selected. 
And I don't have enough Pikmin. Great. So that's a clipboard. That is one of the ways that this game likes to subdivide areas. We're getting into the nitty gritty of the day. We a new treasure. This is not Pikmin 3, unfortunately. I shouldn't say unfortunately. I think this game and that game are both very well made. This one, I think, is just better. Because it takes the elements of 2 and 3 and marries them. The best of both worlds. This one is the most intuitive. It is the most user-friendly. I would say it's a little bit more difficult than Pikmin 3, but in a good way. It doesn't feel like it's cheap. But it doesn't quite have the challenge of Pikmin 2, which is unfortunate because Pikmin 2... If Pikmin 2 had the UI of this game, then it would be incredible. Pikmin 2 is the best Pikmin. You know, not. I don't feel like that's debatable. Also, it doesn't look like we can get that flower look. It looks like it's a little bit too high. Uh, and unfortunately, Ochi is not able to take advantage of that. But here's one of the things that is amazing, and this is why Ice Pikmin are sweet. Check this out. Once they hit that ice gauge, you can freeze enemies, and they are indefensible. So... You basically get a free kill, and... Ooh, yum, 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 yum. It's the goo! It's our favorite. This is the spicy spray. Which in this game is the only version. There is no bitter spray. There are other elements that the game does give you, but the spicy nectar is the only version in this game. There is no, there is no alternative. Okay, Colin, I'm going to need you to back off. I will teach them how to use items. I do not need you usurping my glory right now. But we are getting to the end of the day, so I'm going to try to... Oh, look at the time! So I'm going to try to get this done. There's the safety circle. So as long as you make it back. It's not like we're going to be able to do this. We have all of our Pikmin with us. I don't... I want to see how far I can get them before... Oh, that's eating my Pikmin. Oh, you ate one of my Pikmin, you ding dong. I didn't see that. That's our first death. Oops. My bad. But you still have time. Also, I'm going to carry the corpse. I was not paying attention. At least it's not an ice Pikmin. Red Pikmin, of course. I don't want to say they're disposable. But... We only have ten. So realistically, you're going to want to be mindful of that. And as your Pikmin enter the safety circle, they will, of course, count down. There's really nice ways that the game will help you out and show you how many Pikmin you have that are still kind of loose. Do I have time? There was the item that was up there. No, we will not. <laughs> I got excited. Looks like Colin is still learning, but yeah, we, of course, replace that Pikmin with another one. Brand new. I don't know if we can end of day. I'm just going to let it run out. Eventually, we're going to be a well-oiled Pikmin Ochi running machine, but we're not there yet. There you go. This is our first official location end of day. You get the classic end of day music. I'm glad that they just kind of stuck with the consistency. This game, I think, is a love letter to Pikmin fans. It basically does all the things that the first three do. Kind of combines them into the best of all worlds. So something to look forward to, of course. There's a lot in this game. They really jam-packed it full of things. In-game days on my casual playthrough, I think I had like 50 or 60. So there's a lot. There's going to be a lot to go through. This game probably will not be 50 or 60 episodes long. I mean, it might be, but at this point, I, I'm more familiar with the game. That was back when I was playing it. Unknown. But here we go. 
We've got three treasures, the lesser mock bottom, some creatures. And very foolishly, I lost a red Pikmin because I wasn't paying attention. So there you go. 13% of the progress for the Sun Speckled Terrace, which means we've got quite a bit to go. And of course, we rescued Ross. Hee hee hee. Make sure that you introduce yourself to everybody that you know in life with that sort of energy. Mom. There you go. And Shepard's a little sassy as well. well hey. But now we can learn about the items we've been collecting overworld. Russ is our resident researcher. And those items can be applied to basically anything. So raw materials are very valuable. You need a ton of them. You get them from piles in the overworld. You get them from enemies, from land masses. Very, very important. Every upgrade in the game almost exclusively comes from that. So there you go. A little bit of progress made. Success. Yes, please shut your mouth. Another successful day. I haven't quite gone into like the perfect rhythm of duration for these episodes, but basically what's probably going to happen is I'll do a level in a day and then you'll see a little bit of this it's really tough to kind of time it the other way but it looks like uh oh gee a little bit bigger and this is this is the in-game exploration for the fact that ochi as you progress will be able to do more and more which is great Honey, Colin, that's unprofessional. Don't call me that. So now we will learn that Shepard, she is the Ochi parallel to Russ giving us upgrades. She controls the growth of Ochi, which is great. So you'll see going forward that there's plenty that Ochi can live and learn. Always on the edge of tomorrow. So now with Russ around, we can get some upgrades. Very cool. So this is basically the game telling you that in order to make parts of a bridge, the bridge pieces in this game, the puzzle pieces, you need raw materials to do so. Every time that you collect raw materials, your Pikmin will be able to turn those into bridge pieces. Alternatively, items and gear. There's a lot of exploration, a lot of explanation, so not quite being able to lean into the goofs of these Pikmin games yet. Mostly because there's just a lot to learn. We're only on episode 3 after all. So we'll go ahead and talk to Shepard real quick and learn about some Ochi training. So Ochi has a lot of skills that he can learn. Building up his pup drive. Now, this is not actual training, but Ochi does have a lot of skills. So, these are basically just list-based. All of these things that Ochi can do to help you in the overworld. And this is why Ochi is broken. Every time that you rescue a castaway, you'll be get given Ochi points. And you can decide how you want to have your Ochi. You can build your Ochi out however you want to. You can, of course, have Ochi help you carry things. Or you can have Ochi fight things. It's really up to you. Um, all kinds of things. This is just the base level of things that Ochi has. We have three that we can teach Ochi. So... One of the things that I like doing the most is I like to do the rush. Having Ochi carry things is nice, but I like to have Ochi help me out to kill things. And 
The reward is you get a scrum a bone. There you go. So that's super useful. Let's talk to Russ. With his lack of eyeballs. He is the resident brain. Definitely not Colin. Now we can check out the lab and see what we have. All because of science. More raw materials equals more gear. There's a lot to get. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily required. But the one thing we are going to get, and this is one of my favorite items in the game, they give it to you right away. The charging horn. Oh yeah, I'm feeling nice and ho Okay, great. So, very useful. Now we can send all of our Pikmin at once. It's not just Ochi that gets sent away. Absolutely love, love, love that. Basically, the only thing... It's on par kind of with the level of usefulness as the Plucophone. Being able to do the Charging Horn is one of the most amazing things. So, in the next episode, we will be exploring the Sun Speckled Terrace on day three. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pikmin 4. If you enjoyed this episode, if you could like the video, comment, subscribe, and check out some YouTube shorts. And I'll see you next time for more. Bye.